Hello all and welcome to this AWS tutorial. In our tutorial today, I will provide a brief overview on Amazon Bedrock's prompt caching. I have mentioned a reference URL over here. I would certainly recommend that you visit this URL as it has additional information on this particular topic. Also, I have created a playlist for Amazon Bedrock on my channel. As I create additional videos on this particular topic, I will have them added to this particular playlist. Both the reference URL and the URL for Amazon Bedrock's playlist will be mentioned in the description of this video. If you do not know what Amazon Bedrock is all about or what a prompt stands for or what is an inference, then I would recommend that you view these tutorials before continuing further ahead. As in this tutorial, I will not get into the details of what Amazon Bedrock as a service stands for, or what is a prompt, or what is a model inference. URL to these tutorials will be mentioned in the description of this video. So let's get started. Prompt caching is an optional feature that you can use while getting model inference in Amazon Bedrock to achieve reduction in response latency. So in very simple words, what we are doing over here is we are caching the prompt, we are caching the inference that was generated by the model for that particular prompt. And then whenever a user or a subsequent request is received, Rather than processing the prompt all over again, we are using the prompt and the inference that is stored in the cache to generate a response and return it back to the user. Prompt caching works very similar to a regular cache that you would typically have in your application where you would go ahead and cache some data. So I assume that most of you might have worked with caching at some point in time in your careers. And you would have seen that data that is frequently accessed or frequently asked for is typically put into cache. And you do this so that you save a trip to go to the database. At the same time, you can send the response back to the user much, much faster. When we are talking about prompt caching, we are caching the prompt, we are caching the inference that was generated by the model for that particular prompt. We are storing it so that the next request from the user, the subsequent requests received from for the same prompt from different users can be addressed using this particular cache. So, more, for, the, for the model, instead of processing that prompt, can actually go to the cache look for that particular prompt, pick up its inference, and then generate a response and send it back to the user. This is beneficial in multiple ways. First, it is beneficial for the model because the model doesn't have to process the same prompt again and again. It is beneficial to the user because the user gets their response much faster. And most importantly, the user also saves money because if the if the model is not processing the prompt to generate a response, but is relying on the cache, then the users will end up paying a different rate or a significantly lower rate for the response. So prompt caching enables you to add portions of your conversation to a cache so that the model can reuse the context in the cache instead of fully processing the input and computing the response each time. So you see that there are similarities between her prompt caching and your regular application data caching works. Prompt caching can help when you have workloads with long and repeated contexts that are frequently used for multiple queries. When using prompt caching, you are charged at a reduced rate for the inference that is typically generated by the model and a different rate for how many tokens are read and written to the cache. 
So these last two points are telling us that not everything can be cached. For a prompt to be cached, it has to be long enough. It has to be repeated multiple number of times. That means it has to be something that is frequently used. And also, when you use prompt caching, you are charged at a reduced rate for the inference that the model has generated and at a different rate for how many tokens were read or written to the cache. Now, the most important thing that you have to remember is this note over here. Bedrock prompt caching is currently only available to select number of customers. Now, today is the 9th of February, 2025. It's a Sunday while I'm recording this particular video. Right now, it is only available to select number of customers. Depending upon when you are viewing this video, you want to go online and check if prompt caching is available to general public. Now let us see how prompt caching works. If you opt to use prompt caching, remember it's an optional uh, feature. If you want to use, you can use it. If you opt to use prompt caching, Amazon Bedrock creates a cache composed of cache checkpoints. These checkpoints are basically used so that an entire prefix of the prompt re leading up to that point is cached. And why are we doing something like this? We are doing this so that the subsequent requests that are received, model can retrieve this cache information instead of processing the prompt again, resulting in a faster response to the user at a reduced cost. So now let us see what these cache checkpoints are all about. These cache checkpoints have certain requirements. You have a minimum number of tokens and a maximum number of tokens that are required to create a cache checkpoint. And how many number of tokens are qualifying for to be minimum, that will depend on that particular model. So each model has different requirements for minimum and maximum number of tokens that are required to create a cache checkpoint. So you cannot just go ahead and create a cache checkpoint. So if only if you meet those requirements, defined by that particular model, can you create a cache checkpoint? That's when you can tell the model, okay, now go ahead and cache my prompt and cache its inference. If you do not meet the requirement for minimum number of tokens, even though you tell the model to create a cache checkpoint or you tell the model that, okay, I want you to enable prompt caching, it will still not be added to the cache. So you can only create a cache checkpoint if your total prompt prefix meets the minimum number of tokens for that particular model. So remember I mentioned earlier that your prompt has to be big enough to meet that particular requirement. Your inference also has to be uh, big enough to meet the minimum number of tokens that are required depending on the model. Now for every model, it is different. So depending on the model that you are using, go and look at its documentation as to what are the minimum number of tokens that are required to create a cache checkpoint. So let us take an example and understand this. Let's talk about Anthropic Cloud 3.5 Sonnet V2 model. This particular model requires 1024 tokens to create a cache checkpoint. That's the minimum number of tokens that are required. You can create your first checkpoint after your prompt and the model's responses have reached to 1024 tokens. And you can create your second checkpoint after your total reaches 
2048 tokens, which is essentially the double number of tokens. If you do not meet these requirements, your cash checkpoint will not be created. Hence, if you try to add a cash checkpoint without meeting the minimum number of tokens requirement for that particular model, your inference request will still, will still succeed. That means you will get a response back. But a checkpoint will not be created and will not be added to its cache. Now, every time you create a checkpoint and you add that to the cache, it has a certain time limit. It has a certain time to live. The typical time to live is five minutes, during which it resets itself with each successful cache hit. That means there should be a hit to the cache. That means there has to be a user that has requested for that particular prompt. And hence, it can go back to its cache and retrieve the inference and send it back to the user. If that does not happen, that means there are no cache hits that occur within the time to live window, then your cache will expire. So I hope that this is clear. Now let's look at some of the features in Bedrock that support prompt caching. The first one that we have is Converse and Converse Stream APIs. They support prompt caching. You also have Invoke Model and Invoke Model with Response Stream APIs. Along with that, we also have Amazon Bedrock Playground for text and chat that also support prompt caching. And by far, this is going to be one of the easiest way for you to play around and understand how prompt caching works. You also have Bedrock agents that support prompt caching. Now let us look at some of the models and the regions that support prompt caching. Now you can see different models and I mentioned to you earlier for each model, you'll have to go and check what are its requirements. So we were talking about Cloud 3.5 Sonnet V2 mentioned right here. This is a model ID. This particular model supports prompt caching right now in US West Oregon and US East North Virginia. Remember, while I'm recording this video, it is only available to a select set of customers. As we saw earlier, the minimum number of tokens per cache checkpoint are 1024. There is also a limit, a maximum number of cache checkpoints that you can create per model. For Sonnet uh, V2, you have, you can have maximum number of four cache checkpoints that you can create. Now, similarly, if you go and look at Haiku, minimum number of tokens per cache checkpoint is 2048, maximum number of Cache checkpoints are four. For Nova Micro, it is one and one. And these are the regions where they are supported. Of course, if you want to use this feature, please go online and check that, you know, which regions are supporting, which model, how many uh, uh, number of tokens are required, minimum number of tokens that are required to create a cache checkpoint what are the maximum number of cache checkpoints that you can create for that particular model? Now, let me quickly go to Amazon Bedrock. This is Amazon Bedrock. And as I mentioned to you earlier, going to Amazon Bedrock Playgrounds chat slash text is the easiest way to play around with prompt caching. So let me go there. I'm going to select a model. I'm going to select uh, Amazon Micro Apply. Now, if you go to configurations, so and let me minimize this. So if you see Nova Micro, you can click on this icon where my uh, mouse is. So open configurations. And if you scroll down, you will see that I am not getting an option for prompt caching because it's not enabled for me in this particular region. Even if I go and change the model, let's go to Anthropic. Let's go to 3.5 Sonnet V2. Again, still no prompt caching is enabled. Even if I go from North Virginia to Oregon, 
Let me change the region and you will see that right now as I'm recording this video, I am not getting an option for prompt caching. So I go over here and again, if you see no prompt caching, I change the model. Let's use uh, Haiku. You will see I'm not getting any prompt caching. That feature is not available. Now the reference URL, remember that mentioned in uh, in the presentation. Let me go back a couple of slides. This particular URL, go to this URL. In fact, I have it open with me over here. If you go over here and you scroll down and you go to playground, you will see that the steps are mentioned over here, but I follow the steps and I do not see the toggle for prompt caching. But let's say, depending upon when you are viewing this video, you can go back over there and you can see that this particular uh, feature might be enabled and you might see that prompt caching is one of the options. It should be visible like this. You should see a toggle button over there to enable disable prompt caching. And you can, uh, if you can read over here, it states very clearly that your prompt and models response are automatically saved in cache checkpoints. View the cache checkpoints. That will tell you the minimum number of tokens, etc. Also, it tells you uh, about the caching matrix. So how many you know, tokens were read from the cache, how many tokens were written to the cache, you know, if the model generates a better response, if there's some other parts of the response that were added to the cache, then it will tell you those caching matrix as well. And yes, you will be charged depending upon how much response was retrieved from the cache versus, you know, what part of the prompt was processed by the model to generate an inference. And then a corresponding response will be sent back to the user. So I hope that, uh, you know, this tutorial was helpful. Do post your uh, comments. And this is it from me today. I hope that this feature is enabled shortly. Right now it's only available to a select, uh, select few customers. If you are able to see prompt caching enabled for you, do post your comments. But while I am recording this video, as you can see, I do not get that option for prompt caching, but hopefully it will be available very soon. So thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.